Ti la vodi, vodi, vodi la Dear listener, you're welcome to the audio library of Dunamis International Gospel Center. This message will communicate to you the principles, presence, and power of God that will transform your life and destiny. Dr. Paul is the senior pastor, Dunamis International Gospel Center, Abuja. Be blessed as you listen. Thank you. We praise your name, Almighty God. Welcome to the preservation service for me. Scripture is Luke chapter 10 and in verse 17. And the seventh returned again with John, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Shout the loudest, Amen. If that scripture means anything to you, shout another loud, Amen. This evening I speak briefly on the subject, power to tread. Power to tread. And our objective is to understand our powerful privileges in Christ. Our powerful privilege in Christ. Generally speaking, the son of whom you are can determine the privileges you can enjoy. Even though everybody is meant to live and work for themselves, but the son of whom you are can determine the privileges you can enjoy. The child in the royal family in England was born sentenced to success because of who gave birth to him. No money worries, no worry under heaven because of where he was born to. The child of a diplomat does not need to beg for the visa of where his father is serving. Because his father's position made room for him. The man, his wife, and maybe like four children are entitled free of charge to diplomatic visa. These are given to them free of charge, not paid for. Doesn't need to appear anywhere because of who his father is. There are things I struggled to, to do that my children would, don't need to struggle for. I took myself to the embassy to get visa um, when I started traveling to Europe and all that. They didn't need to do that at all. This, the, 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 that level was jumped for them. When I was go, going to travel the first time, they say, how many times have you traveled? I haven't traveled at all. Yeah. 
Alright, let's look at it. When they ask them, how many times have you, tra- have you traveled before? They travel since childhood. Who gave birth to you has a way of affecting what you can connect in the village. The child of a native doctor is highly dreaded. You fear both his father and himself. <laughs> they said, that person, so and so, Dibia, is his father. When he's coming, you branch him. <laughs> because, because of who gave birth to him. The man can threaten you on behalf of his father. Do you know me? Do you know the son of whom I am? And now, all those are nothing compared to being the son of the most high God. All those are, they are nothing compared to being the child of the king of kings, of the lord of lords, of the I am that I am, the owner of the universe, the governor general of the universe that was not appointed, was not nominated, was not selected, was not elected, and his position can never be contested. The ageless, dieless, weariless, tireless, limitless God, who said from everlasting to everlasting, I am God. Somebody shout power! Take your seat and listen to me. I want something to sit into your body tonight. The son, our sonship in God, positions us naturally for supernatural power. Your sonship in God Or being a son, and we are all sons, whether you are a man or a woman. Our sonship with God, our sonship of God, positions us naturally for supernatural power. In John chapter 1 verse 12, he said, but as many as received him, to them gave he power. To become the sons of God. Even to them that believe on his name. He gave them power. God does not have a powerless child. He doesn't have a powerless daughter. He doesn't have a powerless child. To them he gave power. Whether you are using the power is a different matter. But to be a child of God qualifies and positions you for power. Listen to this. In Romans chapter 1 verse 4, concerning Jesus Christ, the Bible says, God declared him to be the son of God with power. According to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead, he declared him to be the son of God with power. To be the son of God is with power. To be the son of God is with power. And one of those powers is what we are dealing with tonight. Power to tread. Power to tread. Give unto you. Power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. What is the meaning? You will understand the meaning when you understand what serpent is and then his junior or cousin scorpion. Serpent represents four things. One, deception. Serpent deceived Eve. I give unto you power 
over the forces of deception. You are not permitted to be a victim of manipulation, deception. Power over deception. Are you hearing what I'm saying here? First is deception. Number two, danger. I give unto you power over deception. When they say a snake is around, everybody is running. Danger. Number three, disease. You remember the serpent that beat the children of Israel in the wilderness. And Moses had to lift up the rod. And you know the, the, the symbol of the medical profession is the lifted rod with the serpent around. It represents deception. Represents danger. Represents disease. There is an anti-snake venom, an injection they give to people. When snake has beaten them, that is because it's a disease. The, the venom causes disease in the body as it is progressing on to death. And number four, the serpent represents death. Serpent is a killer. It's a killer. The scorpion can easily hide under any of those, especially the disease and the danger. The scorpion hides under the pain. Scorpion equals un unforeseen pain. Sudden strike. When you have understood that, then you can understand what, I'm, what God is saying. I give unto you power over deception. Power over danger. Power over disease. Power over premature, sudden, untimely death. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Hear me, brothers and sisters. I prophesy to you tonight, in this preservation of service, every of those forces looking for you shall bounce back to hell. Say amen like a believer. They shall bounce back to hell. Can I go ahead? Now, the power to tread refers to what? Number one, it is the power to dominate the enemy and his forces. Power to dominate the enemy and his forces of deception, of danger, of disease, of death. Power to dominate. Power to dominate. I give you power to dominate the, the devil and his forces of deception, his forces of disease, of danger, of death. Number two, it is the power to decimate and decapitate. Do you understand that English? Power to decimate and decapitate the enemy. His forces cut off the head. You see, the ultimate of killing a serpent is to cut off the head. I give you the power to de decimate. I give you the power to decapitate the enemy and his forces. Any time, any day, decapitate, decimate the force of deception, the force of disease, the force of danger, the force of premature death, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Somebody shout power. Number three, it is the power to do with the enemy and his forces as you please. Power to do with the enemy and his forces as you please. Trample, tread means do with the enemy and his forces of deception and his forces of danger and his forces of disease and his forces of death as you please. Tread. 
Number four, it is the power to bring the enemy and his forces under control and into subjection. The power to bring the enemy and his forces under control and into subjection. I give you power. Bring the devil under control. Bring the devil into subjection. Bring deception and danger and disease and death. Bring them under your control. Bring them under your subjection. I decree to somebody here today. That shall be your testimony. Number five. It is the power to walk in mastery and victory. Power to walk in mastery and victory over the enemy and his forces. The power of absolute mastery. The power of absolute victory. Over the enemy and his forces. Power to be them to master the force of deception. To be victorious over danger. To be victorious. To be victorious over disease. To be victorious over death. Somebody shout power. Somebody shout power. Somebody shout the loudest power. What I am talking about. We have seen some measure of it where people were in, ch in charge of deception. They came to manipulate them and they were able to find out. Where people walked out of danger, the devil notwithstanding. Where people walked out of death, where people walked out of disease. You heard the testimony, the night vigil. A young girl traveling to Lagos at the Orep area. Robbers or assassins or kidnappers accosted them, took all of them into the thickness of the jungle. And this lady sat on the bare ground and began to sing. You are always there to help. You are always there to help. With her eyes closed. When she opened her eye, the next place she found herself, she was sitting by the expressway or a Lagos expressway behind the military checkpoint. God translocated her, transported, transpirited her from where she was onto the roadside. The same week, a girl coming from Makodi testified of how they were in the middle of an accident. She was listening to a worship song. You are holy, Lord. You are holy. All of a sudden, accident vehicle some assaulted three times. By the time the vehicle was landing, three people confirmed that all manner of terrible injuries, she was seated by the road with her bag beside her. Not a scratch. The doctor observed her for one week. To be sure there was no internal injury. And then he asked him, where do you worship? We are in those days where there is absolute mastery over danger. Absolute mastery over the forces of death. And I speak to somebody here. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Today is your day of mastery over that devil. Shout the loudest, amen. Lift your hands and say, I have power. Say louder, I have power. Take your seat. As I was thinking about this testimony yesterday, the one of the Ore Road, I remember that we have had such testimonies before. A, 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 a lady came to our church from the other religion, a Rewan church. And after the service and all that, it was an anointing service, she got a bottle of oil in her bag. And then, you know, the, the anointing, normal anointing service like we'll do tonight. And then, 
a few days later, there about, she found herself inside a, a demonic taxi that took them into the bushes for ritual. In her eyes, she saw lives being wasted. Do you remember that testimony? And she said she sat down with her bag on her leg and remembered that there was a bottle of oil inside that bag. And she brought out that bottle and said, Lord, can I die like this? If you are that God that they talked about in that church and you are powerful, show yourself. She put the bottle back, closed her eyes. Next time she opened her eyes, she was walking on the road. Walking on the road on, uh, in Wuse area. Walking by the road. God evaporated her from the midst of danger and took her to safety. I am talking about some power that is real. Supernatural power. He said, I give unto you power to tread on deception, to tread on danger, to confront and conquer disease, to confront and conquer premature death, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Somebody shout, power! Take your seat. This is the point. The power to tread. Let me summarize it into three points. Of, of three. One. The enemy and his forces are not permitted to misbehave where you are. That is they know their limits. They have been programmed to know their limits and boundaries where you are. That is what God has decided in Scripture. I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. The enemy and his forces are not permitted to misbehave where you are. How many of you know that even mad men know fire? I haven't seen a mad man that was a victim of, victim of fire bonds. You can see drunkards fell into fire. But the man, mad, as mad as he is, he recognizes fire. Not just him, but the devil inside him. Dr. Mrs. Becky and Enche, while you are a doctor in the university, they brought a madman that fell into fire. Did you see anything like that? Can't see, no matter how mad, he knows, he, he, he knows fire. He knows, he, lorries driving, Voo! The madman will jump out of the road. Both him and the devil inside him, they are aware of the danger. Hear me? The devil from today will recognize danger around your life. Around your life. Around your family. Around your destiny. Somebody shout power. power. No, ma mad people are wiser than... Drunkers. That's why the Bible says wine is a mocker. Just make useless as a person. Take yourself. See, the devil, I like what I am saying. To step into your spirit, the enemy and his forces are not permitted to misbehave around you. Secondly, the, the, the conclusion is the enemy is not after you. You are the one after the enemy. That is how it was programmed. The enemy was not designed to be after you. You are programmed to be after the enemy and his forces. To be after the force of danger and death and destruction. The enemy is not a threat to you. You are the one that is the threat to the devil. Wicked, useless, nonsense devil. 
is not anointed or empowered to be a threat to your life. You are the one that has been empowered by God to be a threat to the devil. He said, I give you power to tread. Look for him and tread on him. It's an abomination for a lion to be running from a dog. From an eagle to be running from a chicken. You are not permitted to be afraid of any wretched witch in your village or permitted to be afraid of any useless occult person in your office. You are the one to threaten them. They are not the ones to threaten you. You are the one to threaten disease. Disease is not meant to threaten you. You are the one to threaten danger. Danger is not meant to threaten you. Somebody shout power. Enough is enough of children of God. Now listen to this. This ground where you are is a ground of life. It's a ground of healing. It's a ground of deliverance. That is why we see healings and deliverances all the time. This commission, not just this venue, everywhere we are found, worldwide. If disease pursue you here, when you arrive, it will return back to sender. Anyone pursued by death, that death returns back to who sent it. People come here to live, not to die. They come here to be healed, not to be sick. They come here to be delivered. And that is your portion. Testimonies abound of several people chased by death. Hear the testimony of that girl on Tuesday healing service. The hillocks already picked her. She was already under the hillocks. Under the hillocks, dragging her on the ground. People were shouting, the girl is there, the woman is there. Then suddenly, supernaturally, the Lord using the face of her pastor appeared and said, you cannot die like chicken. Is that not how they could kill chicken? You cannot die like chicken. While she was still in motion, you cannot die like chicken. She came out. All bones gone. She couldn't leave the leg. This hand turned to the back. They parked her to the hospital. Then the same night, she had another encounter. The woman of the Lord visited her in that encounter. God used her face. I said, lift your leg. Say, I can't. Say, you can lift it. Bam. He lifted. She woke up in the morning. Doctors came and said, lift your leg. Leg lifted. Is God speaking to somebody here at all? Say, say after me, say, I am on the ground of life, of health, of deliverance, of liberty. I can't have otherwise. Any devil, any force that has pursued you, has pursued you to die. Pursued you to be buried. And I prophesy continually, there shall be no loss. Over your life and your family. You will not be wasted like chicken. Where blood is spilled, yours shall not be spilled. All over the perimeter of this territory. I di- now, the time will come very shortly. Where people will place their hand even at the gate. Bam! And the power will hit them. I 
at the area one church, somebody crawled on the ground, paralyzed. Crawled. So all I need to do is to touch the gate of this church. Crawled. And then touch the gate. Bang! Lift your right and say, I have power. Say it loudest. I have power. Loudmost. I have power. Take your seat. That a soldier is carrying a gun is not a testimony. Can it be a testimony? Praise the Lord. I am of the infantry corps. I thank the Lord that I just um, have my service gone now. Praise the Lord. I went to, um, uh, they've sent me to Boko Haram to fight or wherever I've gone. And I'm very happy that I have gone and have ammunition. It's not a testimony. It's a normalcy. It, it's only, it's, a, it's an abnormality if he doesn't carry gun and he doesn't carry enough firepower to blow out the head of the devil. And for as long as he is in the battlefield and he is in the line of duty, he must carry the power. He cannot say I fought battle years ago. During the Congo War, I was there. Or in World War II, I fought it. Even the Civil War. So I am experienced enough not to hold anything. I can go to war. <laughs> Is it possible like that, sir? No! That is suicide mission. So as a child of God, you must be power conscious. And you must carry the power in readiness for the forces of darkness. Any day, somebody shout power! Somebody take your seat in the presence of the Lord. That was number two. The enemy is not the one after you. You are the one after the enemy according to that scripture. I commission you to tread. Look for him and tread him. The enemy is not to threaten you. You are the one to threaten the devil. If they say people have been dead, Killed before their time in your family. It is not your portion. The final point is like unto all I have said. You are not at the mercy of the enemy and his forces. You are not at their mercy. You are not at the mercy of premature death. You are not at the mercy of strange sudden disease. You are not at the mercy of danger. Those looking for who to kill. It's not you they are looking for. Looking for human spare parts to, to tread in. Or looking for who to kidnap for ransom. It's not you they are looking for. It's not you. It's not your loved one. It's not your generation. You are not at the mercy of the enemy. And his forces. The enemy... And his forces are at your mercy. In the village, when it is not market day, mad people feel everywhere. Whether it is Ukwa or Afo, or any of those. But when market day arrives, nobody advises madman. He packs his madness and goes. It is market day. Hair cannot grow on forehead. No matter how interested the hair is. That is how the matter is with the devils in your family killing people before your time. It is not you they can kill like that. The way God has helped some of us. Snatch people from witchcraft power. Snatch people from occult power. Snatch people from premature death. Snatch people from all, from the jaws of the devil. 
If that devil was powerful enough, we would have been forgotten since. Look at the neighbor say, I am not at the mercy of the enemy and his dangers and his diseases and his premature death. They are at my mercy. I read something today. Just today, this evening before I came for the service. A man had, I think, bronchopneumonia. Progressed into respiratory distress. A born again child of God was on that hospital bed. They gave him oxygen mask and everything. He said the point came where it looks like he was choking. So he pulled the mask so that he can have fresh air. His muscles were gone, lungs gone, everything gone. He, he said he used his last breath. To run towards the nurse's station. I said, please, I need breath. That was the only thing he could say. Next thing. He found himself. He was out of his body already as if he was going to eternity or something. So he saw himself. and was looking. And saw himself standing. And saw the nurses standing. And saw everybody. Then they took him from there. To the bed, sat him down, tried to resuscitate him, but himself, his spirit was still there where he took off. And they took him to the bed. And they tried all their best. Suddenly, as if they couldn't succeed, breathing, all manner of cardiopulmonary res- resuscitation, everything. And then they tried to drip him or something. The doctors were trying to move and wonder what to do. He said he saw himself and then a light. Now he was no longer here. He saw eternity. Light from a very bright place. Hitting his body. And passing through this body to the one that was lying on the bed. And he heard the voice of God. Say to him. The life that I gave you to live in this world. Is this how much of it you want to live? The choice is yours. He said, Lord, this cannot be how much I want to live. I have so many things in my heart I want to do I haven't done yet. Things that you have told me to do I haven't achieved. This is not what I want. Except if you want me to go. But as for me, this is not what I want. Then God said, you have what you want. And then that light passed through hit the body. The hand lifted. The leg lifted. The doctor says, he's moving. There is life. Long story made short, at the junction of earth and eternity, he had to make the choice. Have you finished living? He told God, no, sir. I can't, I don't, I, 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 I still believe I have more life to live. Sit down. The decision is concluded. Go back. And he went back. Am I communicating at all here? Beloved brothers and sisters, that devil is not omnipotent like you think. He cannot do with your life what he wants. You have under God, you have a choice in the matter. You are not at the mercy of the devil. The devil is at your mercy. Somebody shout, power! Stand up on your feet and walk to seven people. Tell them you are not at the mercy of the devil. That devil is at your mercy. You are not at the mercy of the devil. That devil is at your mercy. Yes. Look at someone and say you are not at the mercy of the devil. That devil is at your mercy. Look at your neighbor and say you have a choice in the matter. Stand up on your feet. I went to visit someone in the hospital. One day. And the, the situation was desperate and terminal. That is, 
Everything almost. And I said, Leave. You have children to take care of. And you won't believe what I said next. I said, You know, no matter how hard people try, it is not easy for people to take care of other people's children. Like the, like the parent. That was fire. Fire. Oh, then, then, then the matter is over. I will leave. I will take care of my children. I will leave. And leave. The life is on. Until fullness. I am not telling you what I heard. I am telling you my practical experience. You have to leave. You have to leave. It is not easy for people to take care of another person's child. Like the person themselves. Oh. Oh, okay, 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 okay. I have to take care of my children. I have to take care of my children. She was on oxygen. At that time, four of her children, three were not married yet. Four were not married yet. I told her, I said, you see this one? Has she married? No. What are the other one? You have to see them married. You have to see their children. So you better leave. Under 24 hours, the oxygen was out. <laughs> Under 24 hours, the oxygen was out. And all of them have married. You have to see the child of this one. See the marriage of this one. See the marriage of this one. See the marriage of this one. See the child. Is God speaking to somebody here? Help me tell three people you have a choice in the matter. Help me walk to seven people. You are not at the mercy of the devil. The devil is at your mercy. You are not at the mercy of the devil. The devil is at your mercy. You are not at the mercy of the devil. The devil is at your mercy. Shout power! You will help me walk to seven other people and tell them, You shall fulfill your days. 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 Take your seat and listen. Luke chapter 10, verse 19. Let me show you another way to read it. (laughs) Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. This is how to read it. Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. <laughs> I, 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 I have not finished. So. I haven't finished. Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed without consequence. (laughs) In your family, in your office, in your generation, go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed. Go after the witches and the wizards. Go after the powers of darkness. Break the head of the devils using them. Destroy their works and proceed without. Say it after me. Say, go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works and proceed 
without consequence. Have you memorized it? If you have memorized it, help me tell five people. Tell five people. Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed without consequence. Tell another person. Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed without consequence. Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed. In case you live here today. And you go. And they ask you. What did you hear in church? What will you say? Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And pr- Woo! I said, in case when you leave here tonight, and somebody said, on the first day of May, they preached a message. What did you hear in church? What will you say? Go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. Take your seat. Let me round up. <laughs> Woo! The meaning is, there is enough power in you to function as if the devil does not exist. There is enough power in your life and you have to pull it out Enough of the devil after me, after my, my, my work, after my future. There is enough power in you to function as if the devil does not exist. And today, I prophesy, I pronounce, I decree the release of that power. What is the secret of this power? And we round off. Luke chapter 10 verse 17. He said, And the servant returned with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Verse 20. Notwithstanding, in this rejoice not that the spirit, spirits are subject unto you, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. Four keys. Number one is living in kingdom service. Seventy returned. They returned from evangelism. This revelation came to them in active service. In active service. They returned. Live in kingdom service. Live for kingdom assignment. He asked them to go out in Luke chapter 10. And in chapter 17, they have returned with testimony of how the devils were scattering. And he said... They are doing that because you went out. He gave them power at first to go out and cast out devils in Luke chapter 10 verse 1 and 2. And then they returned. Live in kingdom assigned service, especially the service of soul winning. There is nothing that touches the heart of God like touching the life of your classmate, your cosmate, your roommate. Your co-tenant. People who live in the same neighborhood with you. There is nothing that imparts unto you power like assignment for God. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. And you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you. And you shall be witnesses unto me in Jerusalem, in Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. That is... If you are on assignment for me, you will not need 
to beg for power. You won't beg me to protect you from danger, from premature death. You won't be- beg me to protect you from satanic deception. You won't beg me from diabolical oppressions. Living in kingdom service. Number two, are you ready? Understanding the falling position of the enemy. Understanding the falling position of the enemy. Possessing a revelation of the weakness of your opposition. He said, I beheld Satan fall. He said, you are dealing with a falling villain. You are dealing with a falling devil. I beheld Satan fall. All I want you to do is to see the devil as a falling devil. Am I communicating at all? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Now listen to this. In the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 5. He said, 15. Having spoiled principalities and powers, he made a show of them openly, triumphing over them in it. You are dealing with a devil that has been defeated. You are dealing with a former title carrier. But some people say, but the devil is still at work. He is at work for those who don't know his status. That the devil is defeated does not mean he lacks any ability. There was a fight between Evander Holyfield and Mike Tyson many years ago for the title. Mike Tyson was in charge. Even Evander Holyfield had a heart condition. He was prayed for and he was healed. Then he engaged Tyson. My Evander was, became born again, decided to give his life to Christ. He was attending a church in Atlanta in Georgia. And then Mike, Mike was just busy missing road, squandering his life carelessly. And he engaged him in a fight. And Mike, oh, the, the powerful Mike Tyson lost his title. Evander Holyfield beat him. Mike Tyson used to have about 100 Rolls Royces. He had a suit to match each car. He lost the title. The time came I heard where he needed to be boxing on the street in Los Angeles for money. Now this is the point. That Evander Holyfield beat Mike Tyson doesn't mean Mike Tyson can't beat another person. It only means that Mike Tyson is under control where Evander Holyfield is. <laughs> Are you hearing what I'm saying here? Jesus beat the devil. He, he, he made a public show of Satan. He defeated him. He stripped him of the title. But the devil is still rampaging on the earth for those who don't know God and for ignorant children of God who have decided to allow the devil to have their way. From today, where you are, the devil is not permitted to mess up. In your family, the devil is not permitted to mess up. Shout the loudest. Amen. Take your sin. 
What have I said? Two things. Number one, you must embrace, live in kingdom service. And then number two, understand the falling position of the enemy. You are dealing with a defeated devil, a falling devil. No matter how wicked that witch is in your family or that wizard is in your community, their father is a defeated devil. I quoted Colossians chapter 2, verse 15. Number three, walking in power. What did I say was number one? Living in kingdom service, number two. Understand the falling position. Okay, let's, let's put it like this. Live in kingdom service. Number two, understand the falling position of the enemy. Number three, understand your privileges of power in Christ. Understand your own privilege, privilege of power. He said, I give you power. I give unto you power. I give unto you power. I give unto you power. You have the power. This manifests the power. But you must understand that you have the power. Ephesians chapter 2 and in verse 6, he said that we have been seated. He, we, he has raised us up together and made us to sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. And where is that heavenly place? Far above all principalities. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 19 to 21. Far above all principalities and powers and dominion and rule. And every name that is named principality, power, dominion. That is where Christ is. That is where he said you and me are seated. So no native doctor is a match for you. You are not in the same realm. I am talking about the one who gave his life to Christ today, today, today. He's not at the same level with the worst native doctor on earth. Man that is in honor and knoweth not. It's like a beast. That perishes. You are not at the same level with any wizard. You are not at the same level with any occult grandmaster. You are not. When did, when did snake and eagle operate at the same level? Snake is on the floor. Eagle is 10,000 feet above sea level. Have you ever seen in your life where they say I'm robbers? Mounted roadblock for aeroplane. And the devil is a Baban robber. Baban Barao. The thief come but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. That is the devil. He is a robber. He is a thief. Where you are operating, he cannot mount roadblock. Stand up on your feet. What I want you to do, a message like this, carry it, listen to it like three days with fasting. With relevant scripture. The other one, no weapon formed. This one is the, is the brother, they are twins. And listen until... The spiritual, eternal content of it is liberated. And then you become practically intoxicated until you are looking for the devil. Break his head, destroy his works, and proceed. Talk to somebody, say, break his, go after the devil. Break his head. Destroy his works. And proceed without consequence. You know, revelation is spiritual ammunition. That is why these things are important to know. They, you are armed with light for the fight. You see, and light is reflective. 
when you have seen something new that is flaming your spirit, the devil identifies this from far. When you are coming, sir, this person has a new understanding. The last time I saw him, the light was very dull. Now this one is fire. It's not even light. I'm seeing fire. Is it about? If you don't want to lose your wings, follow me. Don't forget that in the realm of the spirit, you're, you're, you are you are weighed. Your spiritual life, your, the intensity of understanding light inside you carry is measured. Remain standing. That was number four. Number three. Understand your privileges of power. Understanding is very man that is in honor and understand that it not. It's like a beast that perishes. Psalm 49 verse 20. It's like a beast. I said you are gods and all of you sons of the most high but because they do not understand the foundation of the world is out of course. That was Psalm 82. It's important to be, to be rugged in understanding. Refuse to be an Ajebota Christian. No, 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 don't be all these uh, new, 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 new uh, present day believers who can you fast? No. No. That was point number three. And finally, Number four, live with eternity in view. He said, nevertheless, don't rejoice in this, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. That is, if you want this power to be rooted, be conscious of the fact that there is a heaven and a hell. You know, Consciousness imparts cautiousness. The way you live is affected by what you think. So you live with eternity in view. I'm going to meet God one day. I am going to heaven one day. And of course, if I live carelessly, I can end dangerously. I don't want to give room for any devil to kill me anyhow. Any devil to waste my life anyhow. Any devil to deal with me anyhow. So I have to live cautiously. Am I communicating? I don't want to arm my... Why did he throw lion, David, I mean, uh, Daniel in the lion's den? And the lion could not scratch him. You say, for as much as innocence is, was found in me. And before you, O king, I have done no hurt. They called him the man without fault, without blame, without error. He was a human being. So the lion saw him and said, this is not touchable. So you don't want to arm the devil. So you live with that consciousness. And it's a new day for you. Let me announce for everyone who has been processed through this teaching. And you understand what we are saying. And you are connected to this unction. I declare, life is your portion. Health is your portion. Deliverance is your portion. Freedom is your portion. Anywhere the devil has messed up and molested your life, your family and your destiny, tonight I decree it is corrected. The covenant of life and peace that God had with the sons of Levi, I prophesy it upon your life. Upon this ground, there is life. There is peace. Anybody marked for death, once they appear here, the death returns back to hell. In the name of Jesus. Anybody mad for destruction wants to co- ke- come into contact with the unction on this ground, it backfires back to hell. The devil that cannot stop you from connecting with God here is the devil that cannot stop you from becoming who God wants you to be. Literally, I say, 
I am not at the mercy of the devil. I am not at the mercy of the enemy. The enemy is at my mercy. I am going after the devil to break his head, to destroy his works, and to proceed without consequence. Give the Lord seven hallelujah shouts. One, two, three, four, five, and six, and seven. For somebody here, your deliverance has already come. The Bible said he sent forth his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Shake seven hands and tell them congratulations for your deliverance. Congratulations for your freedom. The word just came on you and set you free from some agenda of the enemy. Congratulations for your freedom, for your deliverance. Congratulations, congratulations, congratulations. Hallelujah. Lift up your hands and appreciate God. Honor him, Adoy. Lift your hands, lift your voice. Adore him, worship him. Father, we praise you. Father, we honor you. Father, we adore you. El Shaddai, El Ayon, Ancient of Days, Jehovah Rufeka, Jehovah Mekadesh. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you will never. Ancient of days, ancient of days, as old as you are. in Christ, the opportunity of hearing this word tonight. Father, thank you for your word tonight. Thank you for your privilege, for my privileges in God. I give you the praise, I give you the honor for your word to me tonight, for your privileges, my privileges in you. I am grateful, I am grateful. Speak to God and thank Him. Speak to God and honor Him. Speak to God and adore Him. Speak to God and worship Him. Thank you, Master, for the privilege of knowing you. The privilege of relationship. Thank you, Master. Go ahead and give him the praise. Give you the honor. Give him the honor. 
give him the adoration we love you we honor you we adore you we magnify you we worship you ancient of days lily of the valley rose of Shara, Jehovah Rapha Jehovah Shama Jehovah Shalom Jehovah Mekadesh thank you Father in Jesus name lift your hands and thank the Lord for the defeat of the enemy Father, I thank you for the defeat of the enemy, the fall of Satan, the defeat of the enemy in my life, in my family, in my destiny. Thank you for the defeat of the enemy. Lift your voice and say, Baha Shalala. Consciousness of eternity help me not to live carelessly and wherever I have offended you and I have lived contrary to your will, I ask for mercy. Lift your hands and your voice and speak to God like that. Wherever I have lived contrary to your will, I ask for mercy. I ask for mercy. Wherever I have lived sinfully, lived an ungodly life, I ask for mercy. to Jesus, have your sins forgiven, to make today a new day for you. You will pick your Bibles, pick your bags, and quickly rush to the front here and say, Pastor, this message is powerful. I cannot just go home without making my ways right with God. I want to be genuinely born again. I want to be a sincere Christian. I want to live for God. I want to do the will of God in my life, for my life. Pick your Bibles and your bags and quickly come forward here and let me pray for you. I'll give you the count of seven. At the same time, the communion will take position. Quickly, come forward. One. Don't be the last. Come be the first. Two. Why don't you do it in your life? Oh Lord, it's waiting for you. Give him your life. 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 Keep coming right to the front here. Give him your life. Give him your life. Give him your life. Why don't you 